Hi guys, welcome to the Opcon's tutorial series on algorithmic trading. In this first introduction video, I am going to talk about some very basic concepts. What is algorithmic trading? Or more generally, what is trading? What are markets, exchanges and financial instruments? How do algorithms fit in this world? What is the job of a quant? What is Aquant and how we can help you? This video is intended for people with no previous experience in finance. If you are familiar with these concepts, please feel free to skip this video. So what is algorithmic trading? Algorithmic or quantitative trading involves creating end-to-end -end computational trading systems that use statistical rules to trade financial assets in a fully automated manner. I know I said a lot of big words in this definition, so let's take a step back. What is trading? Trading is the action of buying and selling goods and services, in this case, financial instruments. You may be familiar with investing, but trading is different from investing. With investing, the aim is to buy and hold a single instrument or a portfolio of instruments with the aim of building wealth over time. That is buy and hold strategy. You, ex the, you expect the value of your investment to increase over a long period of time. So the holding period with investing is generally large, maybe months or even years. Uh, for example, an FD account. A fixed deposit account that you open with a bank is a very simple example of an investment. With trading, however, you want to make money in both rising and falling markets by buying and selling over relatively shorter periods of time. You buy an asset at a low price, expect the short-term price to go up and sell it back out when the prices rise. The holding periods here are typically much shorter. It can range from microseconds to days. Let me give an example. Let's say the Apple stock is trading at $100. By the way, I write Apple as AAPL on the screen. This is also how you will see Apple represented in financial data sets. This is the ticker for Apple. So if Apple is trading at $100 and you buy shares of Apple, expecting the long-term value of the stock to be much higher and you expect to hold this for a few years, this is investing. However, if you buy Apple stock right before they announce the next iPhone because you expect the value of the shares to go up after the iPhone announcement is done, and let's say the value does go to $110 and then you sell it back out, this is trading. So now that you know what trading is, let me spike your interest in trading with, this, with the most famous trading story of all time, the story about the turtles. In 1983, legendary commodity trader Richard Dennis had a debate to settle with his friend William Eckert. Dennis believed that trading could be taught to anyone. Anyone with any background could be, taught how, could be taught how to trade successfully, while Eckert thought that Dennis had a gift that allowed him to trade this profitably. To prove his point, Dennis recruited 23 people in two groups in December 1983 and December 1984. These people that he recruited were called turtles after turtle farms that he had seen in Singapore. He said that he could grow traders as quickly and efficiently as farm-grown turtles. So he trained this batch of recruits for two weeks about a simple trend following system. When the training ended, he gave each turtle a trading account and had them trade the system that they had been taught. He was such a strong believer in this experiment that he actually gave these traders his own money to trade. The accounts ranged from $250,000 to $2 million. When this experiment ended five years later, these two classes of turtles combined had personally earned an aggregate profit of $175 million. So how does a trade really take place? To answer that, first let me introduce you to the term markets. Very broadly, markets are the medium where securities or financial instruments are traded, a physical or virtual location that allows buyers and sellers to interact. The prices for these securities are determined in the market by forces of demand and supply, demand from buyers and supply from sellers. The equilibrium point where these demand and supply forces meet is the price for that security. The most common type of securities markets are stock markets, bond markets, currency markets, commodity markets, money markets, and so on. I will explain what each of these terms mean in the next slide. These security markets manifest themselves as exchanges. An exchange is simply a fancy term for a marketplace in which financial instruments are traded. Uh, the, an exchange matches buyers and sellers and facilitates trades between them. Some common examples are the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, Euronext, NSE in India, and so on. Um, a small detour here. You might have heard the term the market is down in the news. What does that really mean? Market can broadly refer to the economy in which the markets operate. 
So if in the news, the news presenter says the market is down, maybe after a major piece of news has come out, it means a broad market index like the S&P 500 fell, and he is using that as a proxy for the overall market's performance. All right, so what exactly trades on these markets? You trade financial instruments on an exchange, and these can be of any of these types, which are called asset classes, equity, debt, currency, commodities, and so on. Equity, or the most common type of asset class, represents ownership of an asset. So for example, if you buy 10 shares of Apple, you now have ownership in the company. If the company does well or poorly, you also partake in the company's profit and losses because this is reflected in the company's share price. A debt represents a loan made by the buyer of the bond to the seller or the issuer of the bond. So if you buy three-year 7% government bonds, you make a loan to the government for three years and you receive 7% interest on it. At the end of three years, you also receive the original loan amount back. Currency markets are really simple. It's just simply conversion of one currency into another currency. Also note that each of these asset classes can have multiple types of instruments, cash, futures, options. Uh, we will cover this in uh, future tutorials. So uh, now that you know what these terms mean, how does a trade really happen? Suppose you decide to buy 100 Apple shares at $100. Foremost, you need to place an order with your broker. You must have heard this term, brokers such as Interactive Brokers, TD Ameritrade, Scott Trader, and many other such discount brokers. A broker basically is just an individual or a firm that acts as your access to the exchange. The broker will facilitate or execute your trade for you and charge you commission or a fee to provide the service. So once you place your order with a broker, the broker transmits this information to the exchange. The exchange will try to find you a seller who's trying, who's willing to sell you the asset class that you want at the desired price that you want. In this case, you want to buy 100 Apple shares at $100. Now, the seller could be one person willing to sell the entire 100 shares, or it could be multiple people so that it aggregates to 100. This does not matter. The exchange will ensure that as long as shares are available, in the market, there are uh, you can uh, buy those shares. Once the trade is executed, the exchange will relay this information back to your broker. The broker will send you a trade confirmation and deposit the asset in your account. So in this entire picture, how do algorithms actually fit in? Till now, we have talked of trading as decisions taken by a person, the trader. However, you can use algorithms to design a scientific approach to, to take these decisions. Algorithms will make use of quantitative tools such as statistics, time series analysis, and machine learning to implement a strategy to buy and sell financial instruments. The power of algorithms lies in the fact that, uh, 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 that of course, they are quantitative and objective, so you're not relying on a person's discretion, and they are also able to provide expectations about future performance of your strategy. The algorithms do this through a, a process called backtesting, where you apply the rules of your trading strategy to historical data. Backtesting allows us to estimate how a trading strategy might have performed in the past. It also provides evidence of how a strategy may perform in the future. So what does a quant do? Quants in a trading firm are the people who are designing and building these trading systems. Broadly, a quantitative trader's job consists of four major components. Strategy identification, that is finding a suitable trading strategy, exploiting an edge in the market, and deciding on how frequently to trade. Strategy backtesting. Once you've decided on a strategy, obtaining historical data, analyzing the strategy's performance, and removing biases from a system. Building an execution system. So linking to a brokerage, automating your trading, and minimizing transaction costs. And finally, risk management. Creating pre- and post-trade checks to avoid losses. Finally, let me tell you about us. Aquan is started by a team of IITians. We are looking to create the next generation of coins by making algorithmic trading accessible to everyone. We have backgrounds in trading and software development. You can read more about us on our website. So we are looking to build tools to allow people from a range of backgrounds, skilled data scientists, physicists, engineers, developers, college students, anyone, to apply the modeling techniques used in their fields to write trading algorithms. We're going to conduct a series of tutorials on finance and algorithmic trading to apply your skills to finance. If you follow our tutorial series, we're going to talk about building an end-to-end -end quantitative trading system. Our tutorials assume no prior knowledge of finance, so these should be easy to follow for anyone. 
By the end of these tutorial series, you will work up to writing a simple trend following system algorithm. For individuals who are trying to obtain a job as a quantitative trader in a firm or someone who's trying to set up his own retail algorithmic strategy, these tutorials should serve as a good starting point. So that's all I have for you for now. If you have any questions or feedback, please do reach out to us. We also have a short survey for you. If you take this survey, this will help us design further tutorials for you. And finally, please follow us on Facebook or Twitter. The links are below. We have more tutorials coming up for you so soon. Stay tuned.